Hey, what is up everyone? Here is Twan again and today I will be filming probably my last video with this spiner that I have here and this might be cringe now but this empty case kind of represents how I feel right now it's like when you watch a movie, a good movie and it comes to an end it kind of leaves you with a bittersweet empty feeling that's kind of how I feel because I finished my black and white until uh, scarlet and violet full art binder. I do not have every card that is a full art card for this binder but the way how this binder turned out is good enough for me. So um, yeah, the reason why I started with black and white is simply because it was the time when I played competitively and uh, collecting vintage ruby, sapphire, diamond and pearl, um, wizards of the coast as well as um, hot gold soul silver would have been too much for me and it would have been too expensive. I also don't have enough space in this binder so yeah I had to make a cut and I think black and white was a good point to start. And the a starting point when I played was when these cards here were released. Um, these six uh, during Dark Explorers, I think it was 2012, 2011. I think it was 2012, I'm not really sure. Uh, that was when I started to play the game. Uh, Dark Ride was really strong, but I felt like I was not good enough to play this deck, so. I resorted to play Ho-Oh with Registeel, uh, Terrakion with uh, Tornadius, some janky stuff <laughs> that kind of worked out, kind of not, but I was having fun and I met a lot, a lot of cool people. And yeah, looking through these cards right now, they are beautiful and Pokemon put a lot of effort into these cards. I really like how uh, they are textured. I like the background of these cards, the Pokemon poses uh, themselves. They look great. Yeah, these cards over here, especially these four, they gave me such a headache during that time. That was, I think, in 2013. When these cards came out, they were so strong that that I played an anti-meta deck. I played four enhanced hammers, two two Driftblim line for those who uh, knew uh, these cards, to uh, one shot each of these Pokemon. This was a harder matchup, but yeah, uh, I managed to win a trophy. I was second during my second regionals when these cards came out um, because the tech worked out pretty well. So yeah, I still have this um, trophy as a memory and it was also my last tournament. After my last tournament, I stopped a playing Pokemon cards and collecting because I had to focus on other stuff. So these X and Y cards I didn't I did not know them but I was presently surprised to see that these cards have also turned out really fine. So yeah uh, I think I got these cards two, three years ago and it was before they became really expensive so yeah um, I really like the CP2 cards CP3, 4, I'm not really sure they turn out really nice I also like the Shrimp Gyarados over here the Pokecune set of course CP6 cards and funnily enough, when I was in Japan, I was um, 
in Japan in 2016, the end of 2016, starting 2017. Um, Sun and Moon came out and uh, the um, base set reprint, the CP6 set, was uh, also in stock, but I was not interested in that. Um, when we get to the Sun and Moon cards, I will tell you a short story on how I missed so many opportunities back then. Um, because um, we went to a few Pokemon centers and all of them had Mario Pikachu boxes, Luigi boxes, they had Team Skull boxes, and I think they also had the um, Charizard Poncho boxes, the X and Y ones, but I wasn't interested in any of them because I was not collecting during that time. I was just visiting Japan, visiting Tokyo to see the city, to enjoy some nice food, and yeah, a friend of mine bought a Team Skull box and he received a six packs with his box, opened up the box and pulled an Ultra Ball, a gold Ultra Ball. And he sold the card to a card store for 70 bucks. And during that time, there was a lot of money. It is a lot of money because he bought the box for $25, sold the Ultra Ball and got to keep the rest of the box with a $45 profit. So I was jealous. I did not get a Team Skull box, but we went to around Akihabara uh, a, on another day and um, I went to AmiAmi and bought a Moon box for, for uh, around $40 during that time. And yeah, um, I wanted to open the box when we got back to our Airbnb, but I was too impatient. We were a group of four, two went to buy some clothes and a friend and I were waiting outside and I started ripping my packs. I started ripping my packs. My, my, my fingers were itching and I managed to pull an ultra ball. It was really crowded and I started to scream like a maniac because I was so excited. And everyone was looking at me. So <laughs> I, I ran away. I ran into a corner. And we were very waiting to get it, uh, for my friends to um, be done with shopping. And we went to a card shop. I sold the Ultra Ball. And I bought a second um, luggage to get all the merch back to Germany. Because I made a mistake. And I only brought one luggage with me. Even though I was allowed to to get two or bring two with me so yeah that was that and yeah okay moving on we have uh, sword and shield um, sword and shield was really nice they introduced some really nice cards with EV heroes also with the um, alternate art starting with single strike style um, yeah, Sword and Shield um, was nice. They upped the alternate art game that they introduced with the Sun and Moon uh, sets. But these cards were so expensive and they were so hard to collect in my opinion. Because somehow everyone was interested in Japanese cards. And the price started to go up crazy. Like crazy. So... Yeah, collecting all these Sword and Shield cards was a hassle. And yeah, that was that for my binder. The reason why I started collecting was uh, with Black and White was um, because I played during that time. And these cards are really special to me. Going through X and Y was the era that I skipped and I came back to Sun and Moon after my Japan trip. One last thing, when I was in Japan, I saw a Rowlet plush. I saw all the three Alolan starters next to each other or in the Sunshine City Mall and there was a sign do not touch these plushies. 
I really wanted to have the Rowlet plushie because I love Rowlet and my Japanese was non-existent during that time. I tried to communicate with the uh, salesperson but I failed miserably. <laughs> the Rowlet was sold out and yeah I was looking for Rowlets everywhere because it is my favorite starter and um, Sun and Moon was the era that got me back into collecting. That is also why I have so many Sun and Moon cards. And honestly, I really like the cards. So yeah, that was that for this binder video. I hope I did not mumble too much around. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Peace.